What is up, guys? Welcome to the finale of the Tin Can Brothers Wayward Guide for the Untrained Eye. At least my reaction of it. Uh, so far, it has been really good. It's been awesome. I've loved it so much. Uh, in the last episode, we found out that Desmond is not only a werewolf, but he is a direct descendant of the Connor Wolves, and he's like the town's protector, which is wild. There was a huge fight between Desmond and Truman, it got crazy and it ended in such a ridiculous cliffhanger. The sheriff, Sheriff Reynolds, who we know is a notoriously bad shot, uh, I believe in the first episode when we first saw her, we saw a uh, picture of her, like a, a target of a uh, hostage and somebody with like a weapon. And she shot the shit out of the hostage. Paul commented on it. It was very funny. And now we are right back in that situation right now. My money is still on a third werewolf faction, one that is neither Connor nor McMahon. Ah, but this seems really late to be introducing like a whole new element. So I, uh, I, I, I don't know, but there's so many unknowns. Uh, I really hope they can wrap it up kind of as best as they can uh, in the finale, at least the big loose ends. Uh, and I stopped listening to the podcast a couple of weeks ago because I just, I, I feel like certain things kind of got spoiled for me. Like when I realized that they had recorded it after the fact, I'm like, oh, so you know, both of our protagonists survive and make it to the end. That, you know, I'm like that, kind of spoiled the end for me so i kind of 86 that i'll re-listen or finish it off once i watch this but yeah this I, I i love the unknown so i can't wait uh but yeah thank you all so much for going through this journey with me it was a hell of a time and let's go ahead and get into it oh my god no shit this isn't over, Connor. The town is divided. They'll tear you limb from limb. <laughs> wow. Way to go, Sheriff Reynolds. Madison, you did it. Whoa. You are going to tell me everything right now. Oh, man, come on. What if Dylan is evil? Oh, my God, I didn't... Oh. Ooh. Wait, but she's only got one silver bullet, which she just used. Wouldn't anything now just be an empty threat? Or does Desmond not know that? Before the Connors and the McMahon settled here 150 years ago, we were nomads, traveling from town to town. Our curse prevented us from staying in one place for too long. We were beholden to the moon and easily exposed. And then you found Connor Creek. And not a moment too soon. The abnormal effects of the silver mines made it so that we could control our powers and live amongst the humans who had joined our settlement over the years. They were none the wiser. We were searching for a cure, but we found a home. You mean Connor Creek was established on a lie? And this entire time we've been cohabitating with... Ugh. You know, other than the genetic anomaly that causes us to turn into vicious carnivorous beasts, we're really quite similar, you and me. <laughs> you see, my family, the Connors, enjoyed life with the humans. It was simple and fulfilling. But the McMahon clan had a different idea about how to govern the town. They just killed off and scared villagers to exert their dominance over the town. And we Connors weren't going to stand for that. And that's when the werewolf wars began. Well, sort of. <laughs> there was fighting in shadows. Unbeknownst to our human friends. Lives were lost on both sides. But eventually the Connors defeated the McMahons. And banished them from the town, never to be heard from again? Until today. Our clan never quite reestablished control after all the fighting. It left us weak. Connor Creek moves forward, and we've been struggling to catch up ever since. <sighs> well, as we say in Connor Creek, that is good enough. <laughs> I'll call off the task force, but I'm not sure how long we can keep this covered up. <laughs> I mean, shit. How have you guys kept it a secret for this long? Artie. Memory 
It's a foggy thing. Plus, I ripped out these pages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need to talk about the podcast. Whoa. Twin tuition. That was the best one we've had in a while. You go first. All right. We can't reveal their secret. At least we both agree on that, right? Um, yes. Artemis, these are people's lives. I said I agree. All right. But you do have to admit that if we did spill the beans, we would be at the forefront of the most incredible discovery of all time. Artie, I will eat you. I'm kidding. <laughs> I just wanted to acknowledge it out loud once. All right, well, leave the jokes to me, OK? Let's get out of here. Yeah. Hey, uh, you want us to leave the lights on, Dr. Edwards? <laughs> mm. This is fine. <laughs> Well, can't say it's been a pleasure, but this trip certainly has been an eventful one, hasn't it? Speaking of trips, Madison told me that that Truman character was poisoned in the water supply with LSD. What? Which explains these crazy hallucinations we've been having about these wolves, you know? Can you believe it? We were literally scared to death. But to be honest with y'all, I was quite taken with the experience, and I will be experimenting with psychedelics in the future. <laughs> well then, all right, here are your bus tickets no back to La La Land. You will be missed. Wait, uh, bus tickets? Yes, about that. Um, we forgot your vehicle in the woods, and last we checked, a family of raccoons did, in fact, make it their home. So we just want to respect that <laughs> ecosystem and let it be for now. <laughs> LSD, that was the best you could come up with. Hey, it's working so far. We're simple folk. Well, most <laughs> of us are. <laughs> right, because some of us are where. <laughs> So I guess this is goodbye. Thank you for the hospitality. And for allowing us to tell your story. And for saving our lives. <laughs> Anytime. Happy to have made some friends in the process. A good way to thank us would be uh, by keeping all this little hush-hush. Hmm? How do you mean? I can't tell you how to write your radio play, but I do trust that you'll make the best decision when it comes to what parts you leave out. Oh, yeah, okay, like the werewolf parts. Shh, God damn it, Paul. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. Artemis, thank you for your service. Paul, I brought you something. You got it's a snack for the ride home. More carpaccio? <laughs> Raw meat? What? How did you? Oh, my God. Have you been one of them the whole time? <gasps> Son of a bitch! The whole time. <laughs> Quinn! Hey, how about one of those famous dead canary dishes to go? Nope. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, shall we? Sure. I'm hungry. Yeah. I guess you got that. Yeah, I got my snack. Ooh, <laughs> help. Man, I'm starting to think maybe I should just stay here. What? Stay here? Yeah. Here? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like one of them now. Oh, jeez. Don't you miss, like, food? Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. And, and like, uh, people? Well, these are people. Well, I'm looking at the numbers here and I'm pretty pissed. They're going up. From too much champagne! <laughs> <laughs> this is a celebration! <laughs> oh. You want some? Uh, 50 million listens in a month. It is official. The Wayward Guide for the Untrained Eye Season 2 is a hit. A hitty hit, 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 hit. God, I love it. God, it's a hit. Some congratulations are in order for the Shoehorn Twins. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
How about that ending? Yeah, we figured you might have an opinion. No, I love it. And the listeners love it. Who knew that ambiguity was so in right now? <laughs> I mean, it's the ending everyone wanted. No ending. What happened? Did Silas kill all those people? And, and, and why did the politician drug the entire town? It's a lot to unpack. Yeah. But you guys know what really happened. Oh, uh, no. You don't? No. But you'd tell me if you did, right? Um, Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, if there's anything left in the budget, maybe we could go back for a follow-up? Mm, yeah, about that. Um, there are some pretty massive discrepancies in your expense report. For example, <laughs> there are a number of unpaid tickets in the city of Connor Creek, and the company car hasn't been returned. Just roll it into our season three budget. There it is. Good idea. I will definitely do that if you guys come back. I'm, I'm sorry, we, did, do we not have the job? We assumed after all the positive. Ah, uh, that's where you went wrong. You assumed. And when you assume, oh, no. you make an ass out of you and me. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy millennials. So entitled. Can you hear that, please? Thanks. Great, okay. I got a pitch for you guys. Find a new set of twins. Interview them. Maybe they're evil. Ooh, I like that. We were guide season three, Attack of the Twins. Yeah. And if they bring you guys back, it can be Attack of the uh, Two Twins. Wow, it's getting better. Okay, I like the direction this is going, the twins, so let's tease that out a bit. No, no, you know what? It's not your job. Rebecca, I need a list <laughs> of uh, fraternal twins. I'll be on the balcony. <laughs> All that work, not even a guarantee of the next season. Why do we do this? Hey, well, you know, I could always raise an army of wolves and then take back Connor Creek for the McMahons. God, that's so dumb, Paul. That's hey, awesome. <laughs> don't make fun of my family. You know, honestly, I had a feeling this might happen, so I put together a small list of potential pitches. Oh, good, a list. A commercial fisherman in New England found what they think is a mermaid in their nets, or large humanoid tracks have started to appear in the mountainous regions of North Dakota, but also some Louisiana trappers believe they've found a portal to hell. What? Wait, are you for real right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, continue. Thank you. Next, a girl has made friends with a ghost dog in Northern California. And apparently a boy from wow. Kansas City is what appears to be Benjamin Buttoning. Um, there has been some, oh, this would be international, so this would be fun. Well, that was nice. That was, that was a really nice way to end it. See, I was all in my, in my head, my own head, uh, after the last episode. So I'm like, oh, you know what, what's going to happen? There's going to be another big twist or something. And there, there wasn't there. This was just a nice, good ending to this great story. Uh, oh man. And I do love that the butcher did turn into be a werewolf. Uh, I don't know what the implications of that are. I think I'm going to have to rewatch the entire series. Uh, <laughs> but that was a lot of fun. Uh, let's go ahead and get big. So let me just say, I'm getting some definite sequel vibes. And I am absolutely on board for that. Uh, I love the universe that this sets up at the end. You know, Paul and Artemis kind of going off and becoming like paranormal investigator podcasters. Sounds wonderful. It sounds great. It sounds like Paul and Artemis are finally like starting to kind of connect uh, in terms of their artistic direction that they want to take the podcast in, which is super awesome. So regardless if they keep working at APN or not, they should be able to carry, you know, their fame from Wayward Guide into their own thing, uh, which is really, really cool. I would love to see some like TV network pick this up so we could do maybe even like an American horror story type thing where each season is a different town, a different uh, story, like this was the werewolves in Connor Creek, but they use like the same actors. They just bring them back and recast them as different characters. Uh, <clears throat> American Horror Story does that, and I think it's an incredibly cool idea. And I could totally see that working with something like Wayward Guide. Uh, so fingers crossed for that. Uh, way to go, Madison. You know, he had that big character-defining moment there. You know, got talked up. You can do it, Madison. You can do it. And then she did it. And then she totally did it. 
I did not think that was how this last episode was going to go just because when Madison dies, that's essentially the end of the story. But I think I forgot that it wasn't just what's happening in Connor Creek that is what we're watching. It's Paul and Artemis discovering all of this and making a podcast. I forgot there was that whole aspect that needed to be tied up. So I think I really should have... I think I should have seen that coming, uh, but I didn't. So well done, Wayward Guide. And good for Paul and Artemis for like not, you know, spilling the beans about Connor Creek and the werewolves. I mean, it's a fine line between like journalistic integrity and protecting the lives and the livelihoods of these people that you've come to, you know, really care about and love over these last, I don't know, week or two they were in Connor Creek. Uh, I guess I'm kind of fuzzy on the actual timeline. Um, but good for them. Like, way to go. Uh, the like One of the questions, though, that I have, I think it was in the scene where Sean Austin's character calls up the dead canary. He's like, oh, you know, how are my people doing? You know, you want to talk to him? Nope. You want me to leave a message? Nope. They make a point of showing that Desmond has a silver watch on when he is talking on the phone. So... I'm a little curious about that because we know that silver burns werewolves if it touches them, uh, as we saw when uh, the ammo lady was holding up the silver bullet. So I don't know what that's all about. Uh, also, I still have to go back to the last episode when Artemis asked Truman about, uh, like, why did you kill the werewolves? She's like, no, we're not on speaking terms. So I still think that somebody killed Odie, somebody that's not Truman. Or she just misspoke or something like that. But that line, that line still gets me. Um, but no, this whole show was really good. It was a whole lot of fun. I, the colorful cast of characters, the great writing, uh, the production value, top notch. Paul and Artemis had such incredible chemistry. Literally every townsperson had something going on. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about the townspeople, uh, there were two sets of townspeople that I just kept getting confused in my mind, and that was Sybilis and Silas. Just because their names are so close together, why did you do that? Uh, and then the, uh, like, the gun shop owner and the ammo store owner. Oh, yeah, we're two different people and own two different businesses that could be one. Yeah, that was a funny joke, but I don't really ever remember it, like, mattering again which also really confused me. Uh, but other than that, everybody else was great. There were people I wish got more screen time, uh, like The Butcher. Uh, the Butcher is fantastic. I loved him in Edgar Allan Poe's Murder Mystery Dinner, and it was great seeing him in this one again. Um, and Lauren, obviously, as the mayor's aide, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really, all of the townspeople were great. I really did like this, and I really do hope that either the Tin Can uh, puts out a second season of this, or it get gets, you know, picked up by, like, a Netflix or Hulu or something like that, where they can make this, like, uh, reoccurring seasons with, you know, Netflix money. <laughs> Would be really cool. So, you know, high hopes for Tin Can, but you guys did a really, really good job with this. And I'm excited now that I'm done with it to go and finish listening to the podcast to see if it, uh, like, to see what their, like, wrap up is, to see, you know, how they explain the whole acid in the water supply, which is so off the wall and ridiculous. But yeah, it's a small town. People will buy it. And apparently, the American Podcasting Network audience also bought it. Uh, but yeah, so Who Killed Odie and, um, Dylan's Silver Watch are my two big questions that I still have. Uh, if you guys, you know, maybe know an answer to that, please let me know that down in the comments. Otherwise, yeah, this, this was great. This was wonderful. Thank you so much, Tin Can Brothers, for doing this. Uh, and thank you all so much for watching it with me. This was a great time, and I am very excited to see what they come out with next. Thank you all so much, and have an excellent rest of your day.